All right, I think we live right now. Three seconds in, man. Appreciate you, big homie, man, for coming in and checking in with your boy today. Um, you just got back from Ghana. Life is good in Ghana. I'm pretty sure of that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm pretty sure that it was just as as good putting your feet back on American soil. <laughs> uh, well, you know, and I I always say like uh, they say I'm I'm uh, I'm back in Babylon, so uh, you know I'm back in in Egypt. So you know it, it's you know I, I came back because my family was here, my wife was here, and I was gone for 25 days, and she was like, "We just want you home. We just want you home." The kids keep asking you every. They keep asking every day, "When's daddy coming home? When's daddy coming home?" And I said, "I'm, I'm I, my plane leaves August the 5th." I'll be there on the sixth. I'll be back in Babylon with you guys, and then and next next time I leave, hopefully we we all will be leaving out of out of Babylon uh, and going to to Ghana. So uh, definitely strange being back in America, uh, and after you've been in 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 Africa, uh, experiencing peace and rest and freedom, and and just a a flip a flip side of what we experience here. You know, you got to look at in America when you look around. You're you're surrounded by white people and and, and other nations. You're, we're the minority, uh, so if you go out to the suburbs and some different areas, uh, you look around. You know you don't see too many of, of us, and and a lot of times people look at you like, "What you doing here?" Like like they'll look at you at the gas station, the restaurants, like like, "Huh? Like, what, what, what are you doing here?" You could be in a grocery store shopping, and you might see a couple of black people in the grocery store. The majority of the people in the grocery stores is is another of, of other nations. But see, in, in Africa, it's the other way around. Everybody in Africa is black. And when you see a, a, a Caucasian or East Indian or Chinese or Arab, you look, you're kind of looking at like, what are they doing here? Like, you're like, you know, what's going on here? Like, like they're at this restaurant eating, they're here, there, they're at the hotel, they're at the mall, they're outside. I see them in the car. Like, look at that. This is Caucasian, you know, in Africa, because everybody in Africa is, is black. And so it's like a it's like a, a 360 change, you know, and and in Africa, you know, when you're in the car, you don't have to you don't have to look over your shoulder and look in your rearview mirror and, and to see if there's a cop behind you or be looking out for where the, where the cops coming at. Uh, they don't the cops ain't <laughs> the cops ain't worried about you. You know, if, if the cop you see, you hear the sirens in the back, say like you're in a taxi or Uber and you're sitting in the car in traffic and you hear the sirens going off, the cop ain't looking for you. The cop is just probably just want to just ride past you to do something else. So. Getting stopped for traffic violations, getting stopped for speeding, getting stopped for driving on black, uh, getting stopped because they, they they look at you like you're suspicious in a suspicious area. Two black guys in the car, three black guys in the car. You know, they got hoodies, they got afros, they got dreadlocks. You know, they don't in Africa. That's that's not existing because everybody in Africa is black, you know, so you can just rest and you can just breathe. You can just breathe when you're in the car because you just, you know, you're just in your car trying to get from point A to point B. And so. It's definitely a different culture. Uh, it's a different. It's a different continent. Uh, uh, we do have to get used to um, living over there, as opposed to all the things we've had to experience and enjoy, and and be around here. But that doesn't mean that that it's it's different or it's less, or that you know we're more, we're we're downgrading to to Africa because there's a lot of things in Africa, uh, a lot of positive things that that we can take advantage of. Uh, if we decide to move there and we have to understand that if Africa was that bad, then why would these other nations be going there, setting up Twitter and Amazon, all these tech companies uh, buying property, bringing their whole family there? Like 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 I, I, I was at this, this beach resort in Cape Coast and I'd seen about 30 Caucasians, like it was like three families. And I, 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 I was standing by the beach on the rocks and I asked the guy, I said, is that all your people's back there? And he was like, yeah, was like, yeah, we from California. Uh, we come out here a lot just to come out, just hang out, chill, just vacation. And they had took a, almost a whole seating area and their kids, their grandma, the one people, they had people that were that was in wheelchairs and they were ordering everything. They were ordering like, like plantain, rice, uh, French fries, burgers, smoothies, coconut water, uh, fruits. They were, it was ordering everything. And, they, and, and the waiters just kept coming, bringing them food. You know, you know, I was like, wow. And the kids, kids are running on the beach playing, and they had no care uh, that the other local kids that were walking around on the beach too, that the majority of everybody on the beach in that area is all black, and they're they're like, well, we don't care, we we, we just go in where we please, and we just live, and we we just you know buy property, we we live, and we we do our thing, and 
we're not limited to one country. We're limited. They're multinational. Uh, and that's that's something we have to you know look at because we think that America is a place where we're supposed to live and die and not look outside the box into other countries. And if we do decide to, to relocate to Africa, uh, it's a flea doctrine. If we, if we want to relocate to Jamaica, Haiti, Grenada, Dubai, Bali, Mal Malaysia, Guatemala, Costa Rica, it's not a flea doctrine then, but it's a flea doctrine when black people are deciding to go to Africa. Yeah, that's amazing that you said that because I was I was talking to uh, the guy. He came over here to come and work on the internet. You know, always having problems with internet out here. So, but anyway, he was saying exactly what you were just telling me that you don't have to look over your shoulder worrying about a cop. Like they're not even worried about you out here. You're you're in the midst of people who look like you and treat you in a manner that you're not going to get that kind of love and treatment over here in America. You can't go into a store here a lot of times in a lot of these areas and not get the looks like you about to rob something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in Africa, nobody's looking at you like that. And mm -hmm. in Ghana, nobody's looking at you like that. Um, mm -hmm. It's amazing. You went over there, uh, uh, mighty Hebrew. He's in Tanzania. You know, I spoke to another brother. He's over there in Demona. And a lot of people have made that 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 transition from America over to Ghana and some of these other places. Uh, with you being over there, would you say that, you know what, I, I, I could probably live over here. Is that something that you saw when you was over there? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, when I went over there, I, I saw so much, so many things. And uh, I asked a couple of people that were that were uh, expats that were living in, in Ghana that they had dual, dual citizenship. I said they got they got um stuff for the kids out here, and because you know I got kids, she was like yeah, and, I, and she started showing me all these places. I said what? You know like like uh, go kart go kart um riding like they have in in um in uh what's that place um it's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, they got a lot of that stuff there, and then in other areas they got to get in the car, you drive around. And they had, they Dolly, had water Dolly, Dolly Land, Dolly World, or something like that, right? Yeah, they got water yeah. parks, mm -hmm. they got resorts, they got beaches, they got all types of stuff for the kids. And they got malls there. If you want, if you like going to the mall, they got restaurants. Um, they got the grocery store. If you want, if people want to go to the grocery store, they're used to that, they got that. But one of the things, the service, the people there, there's a lot of please, thank you, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And and everybody's willing to help you. And I remember that I, I went to um, uh, a restaurant uh, called Meet Me There at Cape Coast, and I and I, I had some goat, and, the, and part of the goat got in my teeth, and it got kind of got impacted in my teeth. My teeth was hurting, and I, I was like, "Man, my teeth was aching. I got to see the dentist." So I asked the driver. He was from the Eve tribe. I said, "Hey, man, do you know a good dentist I can see?" And he was like, "Ah, yes." He said, "I have one in mind for you. He's great, great dentist." He said, even the even the high officials go there. And I said, great. I said, send me to him. He's like, we'll take you there right now. Mm -hmm. And he, he drove there. <laughs> he drove there, dropped me off. He said, I'll be back. And I went in there. The place was immaculate. It was clean. The dentist was was, was African. He was Ghanaian. The the sister at the desk, she was she was Ghanaian. Uh, I, I talked to her. She didn't have an attitude. I asked her some questions off the side note about certain things. She didn't. She didn't act like she was busy and you're bothering me. You know, leave me alone. She have an attitude. She was smiling the whole time I was talking to her. And after I got my teeth fixed, on the problem I solved, uh, she said, "She said, would you like a tour of the whole a tour of the whole facility?" And I said, "Sure." And I was like, "Wow!" I said, "This this is this is crazy. Like this this lady didn't even know me. I'm African American. I just got my teeth teeth uh, clean and and checked out, and the situation resolved." And she gave me a, a tour of the whole dental facility, the, the every the whole thing. Like I only went in one room, or two rooms, the X-ray room and the other room. But she gave me a complete tour. It was nice, and uh, and and then her friend came in, and she might have been somebody that works there or not. And they were all they were all nice and friendly to me, and I just felt a lot of love in Africa. Like they they they, they don't hate us in Africa. They they actually want us to come back home, and 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 mesh with them and build with them uh, and be one people. And to make Africa great, you know, they they see the other nations coming into Africa uh, and doing big things, doing business. Uh, but they have, we have to understand that 
the Africa the people in Africa, they're they're welcoming people. And and just like the Israelites, they accepted the foreigners and the strangers as long as they abided by the rules of the land and, and obeyed the laws, statutes, commandments, and also you know worship the creator, they were able to be seen as native born citizens. And that's you see that that example in Africa. Um Granted, the, the other nations may not, you know, f keep all the commandments also, but people, the Israelite people in Africa, they are nice people. They're not trying to kill you. They're not trying to rob you. They're not trying to do drive-bys. They're not trying to, you know, do these things that we we may think that people in Africa are, are out to get you. No. Uh, they, they just want to rise up like anybody does. Anybody wants to better themselves uh, economically, uh, uh, academically, uh, and whatever your, whatever type of um, uh, field or whatever type of um, you know area that you want to advance in and excel, they're the same way. But the thing is, you know, we we have to we have to uh, attack this as a family, community, team, nation approach. And this is how Africa can can start to become the Africa that we know Africa can be. Uh, they have a they have a, a saying. Uh, or like a slogan in Africa is called um, M A G A, and that stands for Make Africa Great Again. And and we know that part of the problem is a lot of the uh, uh, the, the tactics of of other uh, I guess entities is, is to keep Africa destabilized, keep the governments uh, destabilized and in in, in 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 disarray. And you can do that by uh, having um, government leaders that are, you know, they're they're put into the put into place, but you know, they may they may not always be on the same plane uh, as what the people want because the people elect the people elect presidents. Sometimes the presidents get in there for, for a different different um, met, reasons and methods, but ultimately, we have to understand that there is a there is an agenda to keeping Africa the way it is, and from Africa from rising up, and also the people in Africa from breaking free from these strongholds and one of the strongholds in africa is religion and religion i mean in roman catholic church uh seven day adventists uh the mormons uh islam they're they're in africa deep and so you know when i was in africa i seen a lot of potential uh, african is a virgin land and there's a lot of opportunities for advancement and growth if you go to africa and you just sit back and you look and you see, well, how can I work with the people in Africa uh, to do big things? See what the need is in Africa. What what is the need? What is the need, and how can I help to uh, better that need, and then and then have it benefit myself and then the people around me, uh, the locals? Because it's, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at lions, lions when they eat, they eat as a pet. You know, and, and just like hy hyenas, they all one one lion might kill or bring down a buffalo, or whatever. But then you know you'll see them all eating. They all they all eating at the table, and this is this is the kind of approach we want to do. We we want to eat at the table with our brother in and not get the food and then just go like this and say I'm gonna eat this and nobody else gonna eat it too. And so by us going over there to Africa, you know I really saw a lot of potential uh, that we can do out there. We just gotta we gotta have like a family a community approach. Yeah, you know, and that's that's also what the guy was saying to me. He said, you know, Mike. Um, one of the things that he saw when he came here to America was opportunity. A lot of things that the black community or the indigenous community here are not doing, he saw opportunity. So you're saying the exact same thing. When you went to Ghana, you saw a lot of opportunity, things that you can help enhance their community on by bringing some of the things that you've learned and some ideas that you have built from here in America to add value over there to, to our brothers and sisters in, in Africa. Um, mm. Now, let me ask you this. Now, when it comes to the Israelite community, are they like American Israelite communities where you have like, you know, you got your one West camps, you got, you know, this Israelite community over here, that Israelite community over there. You know, is it like that in Ghana in the places that you visited where you have a separation of Israelites throughout the community? <laughs> uh sort of yes uh because when you look at the okay you got the you got the the natives in ghana that that some of them that know that they're israelites like the sefway jews and just like in nigeria you got 
you got Nigerian Evos that know that they're Israelites and they have um, Shabbat services and they, and they have, you know, temples or places of worship or, or synagogues. In Ghana, you have you have a collection of Hebrews of different um, faiths. Some are non-Messianic, some are Messianic. Uh, some of the doctrines are different than others and they are scattered in different areas of Ghana. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't come together during feast days in one location and celebrate, but there's a lot of Hebrews that, that are in Ghana that have not yet fellowship with a, an assembly because they're trying to find the right fit. And they may see certain assemblies that are in Ghana and they might say, well, you know, I understand that this, these, these people are here, but they don't believe in the Messiah like I do in terms of Christ. Or well, they may not believe they not believe they may not believe that the Gentiles can be saved. Or well, they may not believe in uh, the Holy Spirit of baptism, you know. And I came out and say like the, the Hebrew comes out of the Pentecostal Apostolic Church, and you know somebody says, "Well, the Holy Spirit is demonic uh, and and all sort of stuff," or, or you don't need to be baptized. And they're like, "Well, I don't want to rock with that Israelite assembly," uh, you know. No offense. So that is a problem that I see, but that I think that could be corrected. Um, I think that we can um, establish hero communities that appease to the masses, especially the masses that are believers in the New Testament and the Messiah. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people that, that do believe in the Messiah and they just don't have uh, assemblies to uh, attend because they're looking for specific assemblies in terms of their doctrines they teach and how, um, how it is in terms of bringing their family and their kids to these areas, but I did I did see that. But you know, overall, we see more Hebrew Israelite assemblies in America than in Ghana because of you know you can, you can look at YouTube and tell why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. I, this is uh, some Igbos in Nigeria, some Israelites in Nigeria, the Igbos. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share some of the pictures just in case, you know, people watching this and have not ever seen, you know, what they look like over here. But I just want to just just go through. This is at some of their Shabbat services, you know, just going through some of the pictures, you know, for people to get a chance to get a glance and see what's really going on across, you know, the water. And here's some mm -hmm. sisters and one of, you know, brother over here, brothers over here, you know, celebrating and worshiping the Most High Yah. Okay. So when it comes to the separation, again, you got your Igbos, you have your people in Ghana. And what what's some of these tribes here in Ghana? You you, you have the Ghana, you got you got the you got the Ashanti, you got the Fanti, you got the Ga, Agadangvi, you got the Eve, you got the Krobo. Um, you those are the main tribes uh in Ghana, the major tribes in Ghana. Okay, so those are the major tribes in Ghana. Now how do you know which one of these tribes are which? Can I, can I, as an American, if I have a list of these names, walk over here and identify these different tribes? What would be the very first thing that I would notice in these different tribes? I mean, you don't have to hit every last one of them, but just give me an idea how I can identify who they are. Well, looking at, just looking physically at the faces of people in, in throughout Ghana, Ghana you're not going to be able to tell who who's of this tribe and that tribe. Just like just almost like looking at a crowd of black people and pointing out who's Jamaican, who's Haitian, who's from the Bahamas, who's African American, who's Gullah Geechee. You're not going to be able to do that because uh, you know everybody looks black. How you gonna know what part, uh, what country they come from? Um, the only way you're going to be able to find out what tribe they come from is if you understand their language and you see their you see them speaking God, you see them speaking Eve. You see them speaking, you know, a fine team with Tweed. Or you just ask them. You say, you say, like your, your driver, you say, hey man, like what tribe are you from? And the guy might say Krobo. And he said, the guy might say Ga. The guy might say Eve. Uh, he might say Fra Fra. And uh, that's really the only way you're going to know what tribe they're from. Uh, because you can have a, a man that's Yoruba and Igbo and, or a BBO ethic standing right in front of you and you're, you're not going to know which one's which unless you ask them what tribe they come from um so so that's a tough thing to do right 
So is there any type of dress that we can identify uh, these tribes or any type of headdressing, earrings, uh, maybe height, weight, you know, anything physical or something that they may wear that can identify these people? It depends on it depends on like if you have a keen eye to like if you're from that area and you're and you're you're Ghanaian, then you could tell when somebody's dressed up in certain attire, uh, if that's a traditional uh ga attire, or that's the traditional Ashanti attire, or Fanti attire, or Eve attire. Uh, but us as African Americans, we're not gonna really see that. Uh I know that the Evos and Yorubas, uh they they have similar styles of dress but there's some things that are different um but definitely say like you look at the houses and the Fulanis, you can kind of look at their dress and you can kind of say well they're obviously not evo they're obviously not yoruba because they wear different clothes than um than the, the evos and yoruba and the same thing in ghana uh if you look at some of the traditional hats that they, that they wear uh the Fulani in the houses you might you might say well maybe that guy is a house of house or Fulani, but you really have to ask them uh, to get a better understanding of, of what tribe they come from. Right, right. So I'm reading your book, and congratulations mm -hmm. again, you know, for doing a, a, the work. You know, you did a book, and then you came back and did a documentary. Um, and not just one, you did, what, two, right? Two, two, well, two. All, all the good is like, I did like six or seven um, movies or ministry documentaries, what you want to call them. It was a mini series to the Hebrews to Negroes. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. My apologies for that, my brother. But you do have a book here. And I'm looking at this book. And inside your book, I'm looking at uh I'm not sure exactly what chapters this is, but you're talking about DNA throughout the book, several different mm -hmm. places. And it's really a huge thing, especially within the, the Israelite community. I believe there's some things that had happened on Clubhouse not too long ago. Uh, <laughs> But we're not going to get into that. We're not going to talk about that. But I just want to. I want to look at this part right here, especially where it says that it says this is why the sun has no effect on skin color of a baby in the womb. One reason being that the sun does not penetrate past the mother's skin to the darken to darken the baby's skin. The baby's skin color is already genetically determined by the parent's DNA. Okay. Modern religious teachings has made many blacks to believe that the curse of Canaan is black skin. A lot of people have been debating about this curse. Why can people not see this? Now, for a person who who see it this way, what would be your response to that person that says that the reason why blacks are black is due to the curse of Canaan? What would be your response to that person? <laughs> Well, that's the, the question you have to ask yourself is then um is if the if if, <laughs> if if black skin or melanated skin is the curse of Canaan, then are all people that have melanin are they all descendants of Canaan or Ham? The answer is no, because we we know that people in India that have dark skin is sometimes dark darkest people in Africa, but they're not Canaanites and they're, they're not Hamites, and like I said in the book. Uh, we have to use logic and critical thinking. You know, we have to understand that uh, albino, when albino comes out and he's white, it's not because he hasn't had any sunlight and, and therefore he's white, or that's not the case even with, with Caucasians, you know, because people have used the theory that, you know, your skin color is determined by what, uh, how close to the equator you live. If you live in the north, you live, near, you live on the equator or below the equator. If you live in hot climates, you don't live in hot climates. If you're exposed to UV radiation, like 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 10, 11 um, UV rays rating, they feel like you should you should be darker. But we know that's not the case because people that live in the United Kingdom that have very very little to um, no UV exposure, meaning like compared to like Saudi Arabia and Egypt, uh, they you could be Nigerian, Evo, or Haitian, be living in the United Kingdom or Jamaican, and you can stay and you can have three or four generations in this area and still be black at the end of the day. You will continue to continuously have black children. If, as long as you keep marrying Haitian men and ha Haitian women marrying, they're going to have Haitian kids and the kids are going to have the same genetic blueprint for black skin. And we have to understand these things. I mean, a lot of times people, you know, we don't, 
it really, really is that we don't we we're, we're we're without knowledge and information even though we, we we have google we have youtube and we make these comments that that um that you know um in the womb you know you know it, it, you know esau was esau was white and uh jacob was black Hold on, hold on. Pause right there for a moment. Pause right there for yeah. a moment. And we're going to get down the road to the rest of the information. The rest <laughs> yeah. of the most stuff I got to ask you. But I was just in a in a chat conversation over on Zion Lex page. Uh, and that was something that people was talking about in the chat was, you know, Esau is not the so-called white man. But that's what people talk. What? Please help me understand, because for a very long time, I thought that the caucasian man is esau okay so this is this is the thing if if unless <laughs> unless rebecca uh unless any any unless you, when you look at you look at uh uh isaac and rebecca and you say uh you say okay was was rebecca a white lady or was she black was she melanated well we know that she wasn't of the seat of jafet we know that Isaac was not of the seed of, the seed of effect. So right that right there, you exclude the the possibility that that one of the parents were white. And then you gotta say, well, how in the world can two melanated black, what does it say melanated, two melanated parents have one child in the room, one child in the womb that is that's gonna grow up to be white, like say Donald Trump or Martin Zuckerberg or any Caucasian. And the other son is black and is going to turn out genetically to be like the brother from Amistad, uh, from from uh, Benin. And you just got to you got to scratch and say, how is that genetically possible? You know, it's like having two two Nigerian Evos, full blooded Nigerian Evos, having a child. One child is a pure white white boy, and the other child is like a Nigerian Evo black boy. And a lot of times, a lot of the Israelites will say. Here's a picture, and they'll show you two pictures of Nigerian parents and an albino child. And the albino child is is light skinned or white, and he has like like wavy hair, like wavy yellow hair. And they'll say, "See, that's it. That's the proof." And I'll say, "Hold, hold on, before you before you start moving too fast." I said, "I said that was that was like 15 years ago, right?" And they say, "Yeah, it was 15 years ago." What's what's the point? What's the point, Ryan? I said, "Show me the picture of that albino child now at the age of 16." And like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. I say it doesn't matter. I say because some of what they look like at the age of sixteen. When you find out the pictures of what they look like now, you will say, "Hey, this uh, this child that that looked like a, a white a white baby now is an albino, but the albino has woolly hair. He has a wide nose, and he looks just like a Nigerian Igbo, except for his skin is white. He's an albino. He's not white. He's not a white man. He's not. He doesn't look anything close to." Uh, Mark Zuckerberg or, or Donald Trump's son or anybody that we might see that's an actor today that's Caucasian, he looks like a black evil man, but he doesn't have melanin. Therefore, you guys, people have to stop saying these things. You got to stop saying these things. Nowhere, nowhere in history and scientific and science has has two black people, like two black Haitian parents, you know, Jeff Black, having a child that comes up and and, is, and now is at age of sixteen or twenty one, and he looks like a European Caucasian. There's, nobody can find this nowhere in Google because it doesn't exist because it's scientifically not possible. And we have to understand that just because we see the word ruddy and hairy does not mean that Esau was what you would say, to, what you would call today is the European ca Caucasian man. So you're saying he's Asiatic? Well, if Esau was Jacob's brother, then and if the Israelites were a mixture of Shem and Ham, mm -hmm. sometimes people say that that's Afro Asiatic. You know, they they label the houses as Afro Afro Asiatic people or Afro Asiatic speakers, and the Bantu people as Bantu people or Niger Congo speakers. But I would say that Esau and Jacob, uh, if Afro Asiatic is is the terminology that we we would use for somebody that's a mixture of Ham and Shem, then that would be correct. That would okay. be correct. Because there's a lot of, you know, I don't know, a, a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to DNA, DNA markers and all that kind of stuff. Right. We're going to get into that just a little bit. We're going to stay too long on it. But 
you know, I do kind of understand just a little bit how DNA work. For an example, the male or the father passes along the Y chromosome, correct? Mm -hmm. So that means that Esau and Jacob share the same DNA markers. Y chromosomes to two sons, right? Yes, is that, is, is that what we're is that what's here's happening the, here? Here's the here's the confusion. If Esau and Jacob shared the same Y DNA, say they, say they had the same Y DNA, E one V one A, you would think that if Jacob has E one V one A, then Esau should have E one V one A, and if Jacob and Esau have E one V one A, then Isaac should have E one V one A, and Abraham should have E one V one A, and Ishmael should have E one V one A. And the sons of Keturah shall also have even view and A. And Torah shall have even view and A. If you keep going up the list, you're going to say, well, Eber has even view and A. And then you're going to say, well, we keep going up the list. You're going to say, well, Shem has even view and A. If we're, if we're just tracking down the father's lineage. But that's not how DNA and how it work. And, and that's the problem. A lot of Israelites, they they get on social media, including Clubhouse, and, and they say, uh, I've been studying DNA for six years or seven years. And I said, well, where's your books? Where's your videos? I said, I, I, I can search on your Facebook, your YouTube. I don't see anything of you talking about DNA as it pertains to the Bible and the Israelites uh, going back to 2014, 2015. Where is it at? You know, all of a sudden now, after six years of research, now you're coming out saying these things. Okay, well, if, you, if you're doing six, seven years of, of DNA research, then you should be able to answer a lot of DNA questions, which a lot of them can't answer. You ask them, yes, some simple questions, like I like to do. I said, answer the question, yes or no. Is da 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 da? And they say, why does it matter? It does not matter. I'm not answering the question. I know what you're trying to do. This is a trick question. It's not a trick question. It's either, it's either you know the answer, or you don't. Either you say you know or you don't know, or say yes or no. And and that's where a lot of people they you find their faults because they say, and this this is the logic. They say, well, they say, we know that, that the Negro Bantu man uh, or the, the, the you know, African-Americans and, and, and people in Africa, they have evil B1A. And you say, OK, uh, well, if that's the case, then the people that have e one b one b since that's the so-called brother half a group to e one b one a then that would make them also Israelites. Because they're looking at it as E1B1A, E1B1B, our brother haplogroups, meaning that they were related to each other. And so I said, so I will say this then. I said, well, if that's the case, then if E1B1B is an Israelite DNA haplogroup marker, then what the people are saying, because because if you look at the, the map of E1B1B, anybody can Google why DNA E1B1B distribution distribution and you 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 could do that right now and i and I'll, I will show you what's going to show okay what is give it to me one more time just type, type in y mm -hmm. space dna space e1b1b distribution and then click on images And you're gonna see like a like a images with shaded shaded areas of, of the percentage of the highest percentages of where these people are that have E1B1B. Okay. And and probably E1B1A if 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 it's like a, a good one. Yeah, let me see if I can find a good map. These are pixelated. Let me see this one is uh okay. We might can, we can go at this one, I believe. But anyway, let me just pull out the page. Just make it real simple. Yeah, I could. Yeah, if you pull up the Google images, I can tell you which one to go to. Can you see it? Okay, yeah. So okay. So go to um, that's a good one right there. Um, and then also, you see that one um. Uh, that's right there. Uh, that says, yeah, Upedia. Does that say e E1B? E okay, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, keep 
Keep yeah, going now. Be one B. Yeah. Okay. So so look, look, go back up. Go back up. <laughs> go back up. All right. So basically, what well, basically what some of these Israelites are saying now, they're saying that E one B one B. Because I asked, I asked, I asked. I don't know. I don't know. You know, on Clubhouse they have different names. You know, they're not the, the name's not going to say ISUPK and and Sakari and you know any other names. It's just going to have people's names on there. And so I asked the brother. I said, I said for everybody listening on Clubhouse, everybody listening. Are you saying that people that have the Y DNA E one B one B that they are also Israelites? Yes or no? And I say for everybody listening listening here, and he says yes, because they are the brother and half a group of E one B one A. Therefore, they are also Israelites. I said okay. So that basically what you're saying is is that the that the majority of people in Morocco, the white because the white Arabs are dominant in Morocco, and there's also Europeans that settled. Across the Mediterranean Sea in North Africa, so they're they if they have even B1A, they're Israelites. Somalians are Israelites. Tunisians are Israelites. People, uh, a lot of people in Ethiopia are Israelites, uh, which which we know about the Ethiopian Jews and the Habasha people. But eighty percent of Ethiopia is even B1B, so they're all Israelites basically. Algeria is Israelites. Egypt is Israelites. Jordan is Israelites. Palestinians, twenty percent of Palestinians are Israelites. 70% of Lebanese people are Israelites. And in Europe, 45% of people in Kosovo are Israelites. In Albania and Montenegro, 20%, 27% of them are Israelites. Bulgaria, 23% of Bulgarians are Israelites. Macedonia and Greece, 21% of them are Israelites. And we can keep going on our list. Ashkenazi Jews have 20% of the Egon That means that 20% of Ashkenazi Jews are really Israelites. You know, and then when you and then if you scroll down, scroll down a little bit more. Go to the okay, yeah, keep going, keep going. All right, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Go up, go up a little bit, go up, go up a little bit, <laughs> go up. All right, so here's E1B1B, and you got the different branches, just like E1B1A has different branches of like E1, E1B1A, E1B1A1, A1, A1, E1B1A7, E1B1A8. So basically, when you look at this, this breakdown, you got V13, V12, V22, you see Europe, Europe. So a lot of Europeans are Israelites. V12, you see V65, North Africa, North Africa. We know that North Africa, the Maghreb, is full of white Arabs. Mm -hmm. They're also Israelites. Mm -hmm. You go to Arabia, uh, E1B1B, E1B1B with the with the with the uh, with the mutation with ZA30. You'll see that the Middle East, Arabia, also Israelites. You go down to PF2546, you'll see that, that branch, Western Europe and North Africa, also Israelites. So there's a problem here because now we're now we got Israelites saying in a meeting on YouTube that mm -hmm. now we have to include all these other people as Israelites. That is a huge problem. And I and I believe that majority of the Israelite community, uh, they're gonna say, you know what, you guys have lost your mind. What kind of DNA research have you guys been doing? Because now we have to update the 12 tribes chart to include Europe, North Africa, uh, the white Arabs, and even the Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews. I mean, it, I mean, that's what you're saying. That's what their DNA research is saying. They've been researching DNA for six, seven, eight years. And, and they're like, well, Ryan, I don't care what you say. You don't know nothing about genetics. Uh, your, gar your, your, your research is garbage. Uh, we have the actual research. We've researched in the Tufian skeletons and all this other stuff. This is what it is, Ryan. This is what it is, Israelite community. And unfortunately, a lot of Israelites We'll look at these things, and they might they might scratch their head. I'm like, well, these, these guys got a YouTube channel, and they they're bringing out some some points. And you know, if the person doesn't doesn't know genetics and how mutations work and how the groups, then they're gonna say, well, maybe he's right. Maybe maybe you know the the Ashkenazi far Jews and the white Arabs and people in Palestine, Lebanon, Bulgaria, and Kosovo, and all these other areas, Montenegro and Italy, Greece, Turkey, maybe they're also the Israelites too. And, mm -hmm. and I told the brother, I said, you know what, brother? I said, I'm going to I'm gonna have to agree to disagree. And that's all I got to say. I said, I want to believe what, he's, what this brother's teaching. They keep on believing it, but I teach something different. All right. <laughs> so, re so real quick. Okay. that was And that was a really great top view. I, I, can you break this chart down just a little bit so we can understand the flow and how things are moving just so that people can get a, you know, a more defined definition of what we're looking at? Okay, I want you. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to Google mm -hmm. uh, Y DNA M three twenty nine. 
I DNA. Say that again. M M three twenty nine. Okay, that's what I thought. And then just click on the one where it says Wikipedia. Since it's just the first one to pop up. Okay, scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, no, no, go go back up. Go back up. Hold on. Go back up. Go back up. Okay. Now listen to this. E E one E M three twenty nine was once called E one B one A two, aka E one B one C. Possible place of origin, Ethiopia. Ancestor, E V thirty eight. Okay, now click on E V thirty eight. Click on e, click on where it says E V thirty eight. All right, wait, 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 hold on. Okay, see, now look at that. He just highlighted it. EV38 is a human chromosome DNA hybrid group. It is primarily distributed in Africa. EV38 has two, two basal or founding branches. EM329, which, which the possible place of origin is Ethiopia, and EM2. The EM329 subclade is today almost exclusively found in Ethiopia. EM2 is predominantly found in West Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, and East Africa with the Bantu Negroes. Now, wait a minute now. Now, wait a minute. Now, what they're saying here is that EV38, there was a mutation, and the mutation caused two branches. These two branches are the so-called Negro and then also the people in Ethiopia. Well, you say you might say, well, what people in Ethiopia? What people in Ethiopia have are are, are are one of the branches that stem off of E three thirty eight, which is where the Bantu Negro comes from. So, for so people that have E M three twenty nine or that are affiliated with E one B one A two, they must be similar in ancestry or origin uh, to people with E one B one A. Because after all, why would they name it E one B one A two? Well, when you look at the story of the Israelites and how Moses, Moses and the Israelites, they were in. So this is the thing we got to understand. Now, I'm going I'm I'm to try to be brief. Did the Israelites know about the land of Canaan before they went into the land of Canaan? Mm. Jacob, Jacob, Abraham. Esau and Jacob's 12 sons, they did live in the land of Canaan. Right. They, they lived there. They may not have completely possessed it, but mm -hmm. they lived there. And then they sold Joseph into slavery. And mm -hmm. then they later all came together and went into Egypt. Right. So they were living in the land of Canaan. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Judah's first wife was a Canaanitess named Bashua. So when you look at the children of Israel, and then they went into Egypt and they stayed there for they stayed there for a couple hundred years in Egypt, Nubia. Because it says in Jubilees and Yahshua that Moses like ruled over Kush, or he went to Kush for like 40 years. And we know that in the history, people might believe that Moses had two wives, but we know one of his wives was the poor, and it says that she was a Kushite. Some people argue that you know, no, she's a Midianite. Nevertheless, you look at Bantu, Bantu oil history in East Africa, the Bantu people. Like the Abagusi tribe or the or the Kisi tribe, they say that Moses's wife was a Nubian. She was a Kushite. This is what they say orally. This is what the Bantu people say in their oral traditions. Now, remember, before you wow. can have anything, before you can have anything written down, mm -hmm. people have to live the history. So you have to live the history. You have to receive the oral law or know it. And then you can write it down. You write down the history that somebody else has lived. Mm -hmm. Remember, God wrote on the, the tablets of tablets, right? God wrote the, the commandments on the on the tablets of stone. But did all the Israelites make copies of the tablets for generations? And were those tablets recited to the Israelites? What does the word Deuteronomy mean? It means recited again. To the people, to the Israelites. That's what it means in, in the Igbo language, Deuteronomo. So we know that that Moses 
would say, thus saith the Lord. And then he would spit out all these different commandments in Leviticus, you know, in, in other chapters. So we know the Israelites were given the oral law by Moses. And they remembered it. They practiced it. This is the reason why in, in say, West Africa, the Israelites are not carrying a, a, a Torah scroll. They don't come out every now and then and have a Torah scroll and they're holding it. They don't have a written Torah scroll. They, they don't have anything. Mm. Before the white man came, they didn't even have a Bible. So how is it that you asked, I asked a man, and he was he was my driver, one of the drivers. I said, hey, man, where are you from? He said, I'm from the Krobo tribe in, um, in, in Ghana. The Krobo, Krobo tribe is like a, is like they're like a, a family of the God speaking people. And I said, man, I said, I said, I said, I think you're the Israelite. You're the Israelites because you you relate to the God tribe. And I looked it up. I typed it up, Krobo. And, I, and it was like, yes, right. I said, tell me about the Krobo mountain. And he was like, oh, yes, the Krobo mountain. And he knew the story of the Krobo mountain. And, and, and if they might have to research it, they can. But I asked him, I said, man, I said, when do you guys circumcise and name your children? And, and the brother, the brother, the brother didn't even, you know, ascribe to the Israelite, you know, faith. He said, he said, uh, after a week, he said, after, after a week, after one week, we can name the child and circumcise the child. What the, mm -hmm. the next day after a week, you have what the eighth day. Eighth day. And I was like, I was like, you sure? He was like, yes. He's like, after a week. I said, after he was like, after a week, after you, you, you name the child. He said, the child, when the child's born. The child doesn't have a name. They don't reveal the name until after a week. I said, he said, when the child's born, the child doesn't get circumcised. I said, when does he get circumcised? He says, after a week. I said, that's the eighth day. He says, yes. Now, you got to understand, the Israelites are doing these things, all these Torah customs and, customs and traditions without a Bible, without a Torah scroll. So they are the people that live the oral history. Now, when you look at the, the story of uh, Queen Sheba and and many of the Ethiopian Jews, they know about the 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 Kabra, the Kabra Nagas, which is an old text that goes back like a thousand years. And so, in their history, they know about King Solomon and Queen Sheba, or Queen Saba, or Queen Makeda of Ethiopia or Abyssinia. Mm -hmm. and they know that the, they know that there was some type of unification between King Solomon and Queen Sheba, and they had a child named Menelik. And Menelik, I suppose, was sent with the firstborn of each of the 12 tribes down to uh, the kingdom of, of Saba or Sheba to teach them the way of the God of Israel and to abolish their pagan ways. Hence, the beginning of the Solomonic dynasty or the Solomonic people, or the people that would be a mixture of Cush and the Israelites. Remember, Moses had two children, Gershom and Eliezer, with supposedly a Kushite woman. We have to understand that in East Africa, if, if the Israelites are, are going into Africa, uh, back into Africa, like say like, you know, during the time of Jeremiah, then Egypt is the entry point. How long can you stay in Egypt until you say, well, Egypt was getting kind of tough. We have to move. Why we got to move? Because who came on the scene around 300, well, around 500 um, we go, we go, you look at the time after the Babylonian invasion. Mm -hmm. After the Babylonian invasion, a lot of Israelites, they fled into where? To Africa. This is in the book of Jeremiah. After the Babylonian invasion, the Persians came on the scene. Now, if you were an Israelite living in the southern kingdom during that time, and you were still around in that area when the Persians came, you might say to yourself, well, you know, I think I need to leave. Like those other guys left during the time of the Babylonian invasion, where, where, where are you going to go most likely to Africa? But here's the thing. Those Israelites that scattered into, into Africa or Egypt, the book of Jeremiah says, how long did they stay there? Because when the Greeks came with Alexander the Macedon of Alexander the Great in 300 BC, the Greeks came to Egypt and they conquered. The Greeks came to Israel. They conquered. The Greeks con con conquered Greece and Rome. They conquered Turkey. They conquered Iraq, Iran. So if the Israelites are in Egypt at the time of the Greek invasion, if they don't want to be around during that time and be subjected to, to Greek and Hellenistic culture, they will they move further down the Nile to mm -hmm. Sudan and then further 
down to say because remember down in Sudan you have who the Kushites mm -hmm. you have the Kushites down in this area so if they were to try to get to a place where they kind of like are not around these other people Egyptians Greeks uh Persians whatever Kushites they would have to go further down the Nile to where to Ethiopia and this is the reason why a lot of the genetic studies uh agree that E1B1A and E1B1A2 aka E1B1C or EM329 originated in Northeast Africa or East Africa. Now, when you look at the Y DNA E1B1B, remember when we looked at that, we seen EV38 had two branches, two branches, EM2 and EM329. It didn't say EM215 or E1B1B, didn't say that. What happened? Well, today, if you try to search for people today that have the E1B1C or E1B1A2, aka EM329, you're not going to find too much of anything looking for that have a group. Why? Because the white people or the Europeans that control the ISOGG and, and the have a group nomenclature, how they, how they name everything, they got rid of it. They erased it. Mm -hmm. And then they came up with what? E1B1B. Now everything is either contained in E1B1B or E1B1A. But the geneticists agree that E1B1B originated most likely in North Africa, Mediterranean Europe, and other areas that are around the Levant area. Now, now here's the kicker. When you look at Esau, look at Esau. When Esau was in the mm -hmm. land of Canaan, it got, it got a little bit too crowded for Esau, and he left. And he, where he go? He moved down south to Moab, Horite territory, right below Israel. We have to understand that the Edomites also knew about Africa. The Edomites, they, the, first, the, the first wives of, the, of Esau were Canaanite women and also the daughter of Ishmael. So here we see Shem and Ham. Then you see Hadad the Edomite. Hadad the Edomite fled Israel or fled Edom, uh, Esau, Esau territory, or Edom territory, when they were trying to kill a lot of the Edomites. So Hadad and his Edomite friends, they fled where? Into Egypt. Into Egypt, one of the pharaohs had, a, had his queen. His queen had a sister. The sister married Hadad the Edomite. They had a son called Genubath. Genubath, this half Egyptian, half Edomite son, was raised in the royal household of the pharaohs. They had land and all the whole nine. But we have to remember that during the time of the Greek invasion of Egypt in Israel, that the Edomites were there. Remember the, the Edomites were there when the when the second when the first temple was destroyed, and the Edomites said, raise it to the ground, raise mm -hmm. it to the ground, to the foundation. They were there, they were standing on the sidelines saying, mm -hmm. raise it down, raise it down. They were standing there like just chilling. Right. Right, right. That's what I was mad about. Yeah. So yeah. when, so when, the Israelites were got were got kicked out of the land of northern Israel and southern Israel, the Edomites they had to go anywhere. They were just chilling. They were like, "We're not Israelites. You guys are coming yeah. to kill these guys." So mm -hmm. the Samaritans and any Edomites that wanted to creep their way up, right, right, they, know, they can do so. Right. And be chilling in the Levant. Yeah. And so when the, when the Greeks and the Romans came into the land of Israel. Who did the governors, Pont Charippus and Pontius Pilate, establish as the mayors of Judea, Samaria, and, and uh, Galilee? The Herodians, mm -hmm. the Edomites. Mm -hmm. if, you look at the, if you look at the lineages and marriages of the Edomites, they married with the Greeks and the Romans. They, inter they made intermarriages with these Japhetic women. Mm -hmm. Hence, the phenotype starts to change. People don't understand that Le there's a guy named Leo the Khazar. Leo the Khazar. Mm -hmm. He was a Khazar, but he somehow made his way into being one of the kings of the Roman Empire, the Roman emperors. And Leo the Khazar married a woman that I believe was of Roman descent. So here you see a child of Japheth through probably Gomer. And he's marrying a child of Javan or Kittim, and with a union, a marriage union. 
So we have to remember that through all the mixing that Esau did in the beginning, all the mixing that Esau did in the latter part during the time of Christ and before Christ with the, with the Greek and Roman invasion, and then after the fall of the Second Temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD, the Edomites had to go somewhere. The Romans came in, the Edomites had to go somewhere. Where would they go? Where would they go? Did they go down to sub Saharan Africa? Because remember, the Edomites were not given the law. They were not given the law. Uh, the law was given to the Israelites. And Edom despised the Israelites, even though a lot of the Edomites, they converted to Judaism. So the Edomites, they dispersed to different areas. It's not Because remember, now they have, they're a mixed seed. They're mixed with Greeks and Romans, and some mixed with Canaanites, and some mixed with Egyptians, and different things of that nature. Shemites, you know, uh, Arabs, the, 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 the Nabataeans. The Nabataeans were in North Arabia. They also mixed with them too. And you got to understand that the Edomites also mixed with the Horites in Petra, Jordan, which was ancient Moab territory. So whether the Horites, whether Seir, the Horites, or Horite people were Moabs, Moabites, or whatever they were, Kenites, we have to look at, we have to take that into consideration. So the Edomites migrated into North Africa. They migrated into Mediterranean Europe. Uh, they migrated into the Middle East. They were already in the Levant. And then many say that the Edomites also migrated into Central Asia and introduced Judaism uh, to the Khazarian kingdom. Enter the change and switcheroo of black E1B1C, aka E1B1A2, aka EM329. And they say, poof, we're getting rid of it. Now, poof, now we have E1B1B. And if you look at the, the map of E1B1B, it shows you the genetic distribution of all these European countries, all these, yeah, all these European countries, these North African countries. I mean, even Somalia. They're now they're saying that Somalians, 80% of Somalians and 80% of, of Moroccans are the Israelites. Many of the Somalians, unless they're the Bantu Somalians, they know that they're not the Israelites. They know this. Many of the Moroccans, unless you see Negro Moroccans. You go to Morocco, you, 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 you might see some Negroes out there, but the majority of the, of the Moroccan people, the majority of Moroccan people that I've met in my lifetime, they look like white Arabs. But according to many Israelites today, they, they got even B&B, they're Israelites. So we have to ask ourselves, where in, like if you go up on, go, go up a little bit again, go up a little, go bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, because you know what, man? I think I think you're giving the people too much. You know what I mean? They, they, they got to pay for this kind of information. Exactly. Let me, let me, let me, go, let me just break it down. Like, one last thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. Somebody just went to school today. All right. All right where, so where, where you want to go? Where you want to go? On up? Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Okay. It's right there. All right. So if the Israelites are black, which we know that they, they are people of color, where in the world are these black Israelites in Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, Kosovo, Albania, Montenegro, Bulgaria, Greece, Cyprus, Sicily, South Italy, Serbia, Romania. They're giving you high numbers. They're giving you 60%, 70%, 40%, 20%. That's like one-fourth. That's like 25% or, or 20% mm -hmm. of people in these countries that should be looking like black Israelites, but no, they're not. They're they have uh, lighter skin, white skin, and supposedly, according to this white DNA E one view when they have a group and these Israelites new this Israelite false teaching that they're also the Israelites. So I, I'm going to close by saying I've been on Clubhouse watching people talking. There's Israelites now that are saying that we need to embrace the Quran the Book of Mormon, and the Bible, and bring it together. And that's the only way we're going to obtain salvation and understand our true identity and purpose, is that we have to embrace and accept the Book of Mormon, the Quran, and the Bible as one. And if we don't if we don't accept the Book of the Quran and Allah and, Ma, and the Prophet Muhammad, they're even giving scriptures saying that the Prophet Muhammad was foretold to be the Prophet for the Israelites. And I'm I'm on here. People might say, oh, "Rounds a troll, rounds a troll." No, I mean people are tagging me in clubhouse rooms because they want to see, they want to hear what I got to say. And all I got to say is, you know, I disagree. I disagree. And if you want to know the truth, then come to my clubhouse or or follow me on H2N TV or read my books, and I break it all down. 
You know what? That'll be dope, man. Y'all really get a chance to chop it up, man. Maybe we can even host a, a, a debate or something right here on True Flakes, man, or something like that. But anyway, man, listen, man, you know, let's just get back to, to Africa real quick. You know what I mean? Because I know the people really want to know what is it? What is Israelite culture there? What does it really look like? You know, I want to come to, to, to Ghana. What are some of the things I got to do to get embedded into the culture? Um, well, a lot of the culture that's um Israelitish, um, you'll see it best in the villages. Um, the people know their traditions, um, like circumcision on the eighth day, naming on the eighth day. Uh, the names of everybody mean something, just like when the women of Israel were naming their children, their names actually meant something. Um, you know, Ronald doesn't mean anything in Hebrew. You know, uh, you know, there's a lot of names that people have that don't mean anything in Hebrew. And then when you look at the the dietary law, um, you know, you will see uh, in the ancient times that they didn't eat pork and they didn't eat certain types of fish. You know, you're not going to see shark shark fin soup in Africa. You're not going to see octopus and different types of <laughs> right. things uh, that dolphins or anything. We're not eat, they're not eating in Africa. You know, you're not going to see people eating horse in Africa, uh, zebra in Africa, eating lions. Um, you know, even though they, there, there are people that eat bush meat, uh, for the most part, they're eating beef, uh, chicken, lamb, goat, uh, fish. And then when you look at cleanliness laws, cleanliness, cleanliness laws is big, especially in the villages. You know, you, you know, when you when you have a daughter, uh, it's not like you have a newborn baby, and you have a daughter or a son, the daughter, you have to, uh, she's, the woman's unclean for a longer period of time uh, if she has a daughter than versus son. That's in the Bible. Uh, you will see that in places of, of worship, uh, temples, synagogues, assemblies, uh, that you have to take off your shoes. Uh, you'll still see altars and shrines. You'll still see um, uh, 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 burnt offerings and sacrifices in certain areas for sins. You'll still see drink offerings, which is libations. Uh, you'll still see casting of lots, which is done by the Israelites. Uh, the Israelites still worship the creator, one God, but they, they also pay hom homage to the ancestors. They, they look to the ancestors for sometimes if, advice and guidance if, if you know, they don't get an answer from God. This, you see this in the book of Samuel um, with King Saul in, 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 the, in the medium. So there's a lot of things that you, and, and even in the language, uh even even in you know the the dowry how, how people have have wives and if if a, if if a man if a man and a woman are married and the man dies then the brother has to has to cover the the widow he has to cover the widow because he is part of their bloodline uh and and not saying he has to have sex with this, the widow and, and produce children but you know he has to cover her you know and so there's a lot of things uh more than that that you can see in the Bantu culture, and specifically in Ghana and his other countries as well, but to learn the culture, um, you really have to, you really have to be around the people. You know, the harp, the lie, the drums, all these things that the Israelites did in the Bible. You see that in in, in Africa, mm -hmm. they're they're playing the harp, they're playing the lyre, they're playing the drums. The Bible talks about this, the tambourine. So you know, when you when you look at the Bible and you're reading the Bible. You're really, you're really, if you really, if you really can imagine it, don't imagine the people you see uh, in Europe or in Israel today. Imagine the people that are bound to people in Sub-Saharan Africa, because that's what they're actually practicing. What I see in the Bible, without reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because uh, I got something I want to share with you today, my brother. I'm not sure where I put it. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> I don't know if that looks familiar to you or not, but yeah, yeah, I know I know what that is. Have you seen one of these before? I, I seen it on Amazon. I, I I seen it on the way to Ghana. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. I said, maybe I can get this book when I get back. Listen, I wish I could show it to you. You know, I did a little video. I, I like the premiere. Can I premiere my video? I want to premiere my video. I did a video. Oh man. There, there are a lot of ways that you can utilize this book 
for those who don't know this this pseudo author wrote a pseudo book about the israelite community trying to debunk a lot of things that you know are biblical you know and you know we can actually prove these things through just through history and along with what you're talking about but i know what you're saying here is it has a lot of truth to it especially when you're talking about all the similarities of israelites uh, uh culture that's within the scripture that we see it in real time there you know amongst the people so I'm reading this guy's book. And so, you know, within the book, he's trying to explain or disprove the fact that there's an ex exile that took place. He's talking about um, just various things that, you know, we teach. Right. So that that tries to debunk what we're saying. Uh, he has a chapter there about the North American Indians. And within the, the book, he's mentioning James Adair and he's talking about, you know, uh, that the exile didn't happen. It's just a lot of just, you know, jibber jabber. It's a lot of copy paste that he was doing. But anyway, long story short, I'm I'm thinking about some of the, the, the similarities here amongst the Native Americans within James Adair book. And I'm like, why didn't he actually read the book? Because you, you can see here that the Cherokee Indians reference God as Yohewa. Are there people there in Ghana referencing Elohim, our God, as Yahuwah, Yohewa, within those very same dialects, I would say? Yeah, so you, so you will see the word Y-E-H-O-W-A-H -H in Ghana. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, we that we in America we might say Jehovah, but in 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 Ghana pronunciation is Yahuwah, Yahuwah. And then you got to understand that the you know I don't want to like you say I'm giving people too much information, but there's a there's a word it's called Yao, Y A W, Yao. You can pronounce it different ways, but the Greeks. They their version of how they pronounce pronunciated the tetragrammaton. Uh, they pronunciated it as I think iota, alpha, and omega, something like that. Yeah, I, I got I got the I got the, the proof the, from the Dead Sea Scrolls to back it up. And the pronunciation of these Greek letters is Yao, Yao, Y A W. And you see that in Ghana especially amongst the Fanti and the Ashanti people and the naming, the naming system. When you look at the, the number four in the Kikongo dialect, the word for the number four in the Kikongo dialect is Ya, Ya. And the Kikongo, Kikongo dialect is very interesting because the, the number four, uh, Judah's, I mean, Jacob's fourth son was Judah. Jacob's fourth son was Judah. And when you look at the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day is which commandment? It's the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment is the Sabbath day. And Judah's, Jacob's fourth son is Judah. And when you look at the capital of Cameroon, it's Yaounde, Yaounde, which in the Kikongo language is akin to uh also judah but it has a meaning of ya onde or ya andi or ya yandi and so in the dialects of the boundary people god has god the creator has attributes therefore he has different names just like we have el elian el shaddai you know el we have yahuwah and the alpha and the mega the beginning and the end you know i am that i am you know, we have these different titles because uh, he has attributes. The same way you see the same thing in um, Bantu's dialects. So that in Yorubas, you might see Olua or Oladumare or Oluran, or you'll see Chukwu, or you'll see Mawu, or you'll see Niyame, Niyame, or you might see Nisi, or you might see Nagai, you might see Congo, or uh, Tata Zambi. And so we we know that the the tetragrammaton is the yod hey va hey. 
that's four, it's four letters. But what do those four letters mean? Well, you know, the yod is the hand, the hay is behold or to look, uh, and the vav is to secure or a nail or peg, just like the vav is the nail that 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 you that held held the tabernacle to the floor, uh, the vav, and we know that the hay is a behold. So if you look at the tetragrammaton, if you look at it from a pictographic uh, aspect, you will see behold. Behold the hand, yod, behold the nail. Behold the hand, behold the nail. And you, if, you, if you look at the story of Christ, Christ showed people his hand. He said, put your finger in my hand. He didn't say, put your finger in my, put your finger in my feet. He said, put your finger in my hand. You know, and so we, there's a lot of things that, that the Ghanaian culture, uh, sitting at the right, the right hand of the king, you know, even in the Congo culture, the, I, I tried to take a picture with a with a queen, and a Congo queen, and she was she was on the left side, and she's like, no 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 stop, and she said, I got to be on the right side, and I said, why? And she says, she says, I'll tell you later, you understand. It has to do with the Israelites, and she came over to the right side and took a picture of me. I'm not a king, but she's the queen, and she said, I got I got to be on the right side, and it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff, man. I'm telling you. You know, I was in I was in this this um building in Ghana, and it was a it was an old picture, and the picture had a shofar, and I said this is a rhyme tour, and the Ghanaian people was like, yeah, I was like I said what y'all do with that? They said we blow it, you know, do the Arabs blow shofars? Do the people in Kosovo and Montenegro, and Italy, and Kosovo in, in Bulgaria, Albania, uh, do they do that in Arabia? Do they blow the shofar? I mean, you got the Maroons deep in the forest of Jamaica that blow the Abeng. And that's that's like a cow's horn, and they and whenever they they have enemies or they got to alert people, or they have celebrations and they want to call attention. They they're blowing it for different reasons. They're blowing it. They're even saying the same name for God on on Yom Kippur that the Fantis and the Shanti say for the Supreme Creator. I've seen I've seen them on YouTube speaking about the Supreme Creator speaking in the Maroon language and it's exactly the same as the Fanti and the Shanti. It's too much information to prove these things, but you know, uh, the Israelites exist. The Hebrew language exists. Uh, I mean, the, even even stories of the Exodus and the giving of the commandments and the laws. Uh, other nations know about this, like the African pygmies. Uh, they know about the giving of the law and and the commandments on the mountain by the God of Thunder or or the God of the, the God that's the highest and. The, the African pygmies, they know about the Bantu Negroes because they live amongst the Bantu Negroes. And if you look at the oldest indigenous African people in Africa, it's the South Sudanese Nilots, it's the African pygmies in, in the Khoisan. They are the oldest people in Africa that really have been there for a long time. They haven't really been mixing with anybody. They still are short in the forests of the Congo, Cameroon, Gabon, Uganda. And then you have the, the, the Nilots that are in South Sudan that are very, very tall, and they're very, very, very dark. Mm -hmm. And if you see any of the pictures of them standing by the oxen and the cows, uh, and they're butt naked, the men, you're going to see that they're not circumcised. They're not circumcised. So we have to start to pay attention to subtle things and, and what the other nations are saying. I read a lot of books, and I do a lot of research on, on all the nations and tribes in, in the whole world. And, and I can prove that, uh, that we are the Israelites and that all these things that happen in the Bible uh, can be backed up. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you know I took the book and I basically you know I I put, put it, it back in down. Nice place. I put it back down. <laughs> I put it in a nice place so I could pull it out. You know what I'm saying for the video, so it'd be a great presentation on how I presented yeah. it to you. But really, I have other uses for it. Like the other day, I went to work out and I had a flat tire, and it was really <laughs> yeah. great. It was really great for me to use to uh, to jack the car up and hold the car up while I, you know, and it, it was it came in handy. Um, and then also the week before that, I went to go work out and I did uh, some some um, some calf lifts or what have you off the side of it. It was really really good. I'm still recovering. Trust and believe, man. I, so I appreciate the brother for writing that book. I have a lot of uses out of it. I haven't read it, but. It has it has saved my life a few, a few well, times. Well, you know, no, no, notice how people go through extensive, extensive work and time and effort to put out a book to to reverse us from knowing who we really are 
-hmm. and connecting ourselves to the Israelites of the Bible. Like, no, God forbid we can't be the true Israelites. God forbid we can't be God's chosen people. God forbid we can't be connected to royalty, kings, priests, and queens, and prophets. God forbid that because, because we can't be that. So let's put out a book and do research and spend time, effort, and money and the publisher book get it copyrighted to disprove that black people are not the Israelites, but instead our identity is West Africans. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Cointel Pro, these guys are real agents. Anything to you know to separate our community. I mean, come on, man. When are we gonna get get it through our thick skulls, bro? Like this is what the you know uh, 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 the job of the of the other people to do is to keep our people separated. That's their job. That's their job to do. Not our job to do. Not this. our job. We're doing their job for them. They sitting back like appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, like more, more, make more books. Make more books to prove that they're not the Israelites. Exactly. We love it. That's what they're saying. Now, for an example, um, just just I mean, it's kind of hard for me to even just just take all of that information, man. You know, just listening to, you know, a few other peoples and what they they were talking about when it comes to the DNA and things like that. You know, it's really great. Everybody have their own perspective. But I really feel as though instead of brothers, you know, making videos and and trashing each other, especially within the Israelite community, maybe he can give you a call and say, hey, Ron, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hear what you're saying, but let's pull this together and see if we can come up with a, a better solution on how we can attack this. You know what I mean? So so we can we can really further the work together rather than I'm going to do something to try to tear down your ideology to make myself look big. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting really sick and tired of that, especially within the Israelite community and, and plenty of the you know, communities abroad and how we treat one another. Instead of coming together, we're instead of tearing each other down. You and that's, I mean? and that's, the, that's the problem. We're, we're, we're banging on Esau. We're banging on Jacob. We're banging on each other. Like, we're, we're like, when are we going to stop banging on people and stop trying to debate people and tear people down and debunk people and, and call people out and say, that Ron Dalton guy, man, these guys crazy, man. He's telling you guys to leave Babylon. We're, we're saying it's Babylon, but Ron's telling you to leave Babylon. Like, mm -hmm. like you guys, we're in Babylon right now, but Ron's telling you to leave Babylon. Ron's crazy. You know, we're not supposed to leave Babylon. You know, we got to start, we got to stop banging on Esau, stop banging on Jacob, and we got to start coming up with, with, with uh, 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 plans of execution. Uh, we need, we need, we need to think long term future. We start need to have, we start, we start, we need to have, uh, uh, like, just dis, like discussions that, that have goals and solutions. Goals, identify the problem. Identifying the solution, coming up with goals, uh, setting setting the standards for how we want our goals outlined, and how do we achieve those goals, or how we achieve that what we're trying to do, so that our people can advance to the next step. Because we know the Bible says the Bible is our past, present, and future history. So we so if we do a careful analysis of what the Bible says, what the scriptures say, and we know that we are in Babylon, we are in our spiritual Egypt. The Bible says, "I will bring thee into Egypt again by way of strip of ships." Uh, if the Israelites are supposed to have any type of regathering or, or leaving or coming out of the place of our enemies or being gathered from the place we were scattered from, we cannot stay forever in Babylon and Egypt. Now, I don't know the future, but, you know, Joshua and Caleb went and they came back with good report. And, and what we did in Ghana was we went there as, as a group of Hebrews. We came back with good report. And we actually got land. We got land, and we've seen that the land is good, that we can survive in this land. And if we work together, we can thrive in this land. Because why? The Chinese is doing it. The East Indian is doing it. The Arabs are doing it. The Europeans are doing it. The Jews are doing it. So if they can do it, and this is in Black Africa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was telling some of my friends, man, I said, you guys go to Africa. I mean, they're going to look at me like I'm half caste, like I'm a Rooney. I'm a white person. They're going to look at me like, oh, Rooney, half caste, because because we're light-skinned. But I said, man, brothers, I said, when you go to the grocery store in the suburbs, they look at you like you crazy. Like, like who is this black man with dreadlocks? He's, he's dark-skinned. Like, he's a thug. He needs to be back in Detroit. I said, when you go to Africa, you're going to feel at home, brother. You're going to feel like you, you belong here. They're going to be looking at you like they're going to be saluting you like, yeah, brother. You know, they... they a lot of times, a lot of times, even though we're the same complexion, we had the woolly hair, we had the woolly beard. You know, they see us, 
they know we're African American because they hear us talking and they see our clothes and everything. They see us in the group in the, in the tour bus and you know we don't know we're looking around like we don't know where to go. We're looking at KFC like oh they got KFC and they and they see us and they be like smiling and then when you make eye contact with them, they be like they be like they be like chief boss you know king queen they they, they we, it's like it's like Wakanda it's like everybody's lo- like love on each other like you black I'm black you know we proud to be black. You know, they, they have their Afro Afro beach music and the Caribbean music, which is over there, too. We have our African-American hip hop music, but they love all of that. They know about it. They watch TV. They watch YouTube. And it's time for us to to leave this oppressive system. Like they keep telling us, like, man, why you guys keep staying there? Like they telling you to leave, like telling you if you don't like it here, leave. You keep whining, complaining. Don't shoot. Hands up. Don't shoot. We want reparations. You got the ABOS. You got everybody complaining about the situation in America. It ain't going to change. So don't knock people that have saved up the money. They took their plane ticket and they went there and they seen God and they got, and they fell in love and they're like, man, uh, even if I had another spot in Africa that I can just come back and forth and visit. And then when things get really tight in America, I'm on that plane flying out. You know, don't don't take that from us. Let us, let us do that. If you want to stay, if you want to stay, that's fine. People people say, well, Israel's in Peru. We need, to, if anything, God forbid, we don't need to go to Africa. Why go to Africa? Peru is Jerusalem. Let's go to Peru. Let's go to South America. That's the wilderness. Okay, brother. If all black people don't want to go to Africa because they they scared, they they love the word America, North America, Central America, South America. You got to stay in that America realm. Then go ahead to South America. But my behind is going back to Africa <laughs> because because you know, I could I could look at my parents and my um, my uncles. And they could do their DNA test and they can say, right, I did my DNA test. What's the show? Nigeria, Benin, Togo. So my so my DNA and a lot of our ancestors that were descendants of slaves, they were taken from West Africa. You look at if you look at people in the Fanti tribe and the Shanti tribe. I was I was I was showing a video to one of my friends yesterday um, of a Fanti guy. The Fanti guy, the brother was like, my friend was like, man, he sounds like Jamaican. He sounds Jamaican. I said, nah, he's he's from the Fanti tribe. He's not Jamaican. He's like, wow, really? I was like, yeah, because a lot of the Fanti people and the Shanti people were taken to Jamaica. We had the same traditional custom, same food, same, same food, everything. And the Fonty guy said that his grandparents told him that we are the Israelites. Now, I got I got on camera two Fonty brothers saying that the elders and their grandparents told them that they are the Israelites, that they are the Hebrews. And they said, they keep telling us we're Christians. We're not Christians. We are the Hebrews. We are the Israelites. This is coming from people in, in Cape Coast. Wow. They never seen me in their whole life. I just got a camera and I said, What's your name, brother? What tribe are you from? Uh let's, let's let me just talk, let me ask you some questions. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know I was he roofs and eagles. He knows a filmmaker, book author. I just I just asked him, I said, um, I said, you know, what's what you guys identity according to the Bible? He says, Yeah, you know, the people, you know, in the West, you know, the, the Europeans, they want to say we come over here and say we're Christians, we're Christians. He said, No, we are the Israelites, we're the Hebrews. I was like, wow. And the brother next to me, uh, the, the the videographer that was holding the camera at the time, he was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we got this on camera. We're about to show all of this. The, you know, a lot of the a lot of, a lot of people there ain't know this. They know this stuff. We're the Israelites. The other nations know we're the Israelites. They don't yeah. want us to come back. They don't want us to connect back with the majority of the Israelites. Because remember, Ghana's one country, it's 31 million people in Ghana. Mm-hmm. It's about 45 million African Americans in the whole country of America. And there's like 54 countries in, in, in Africa, and the majority of the sub-Saharan countries are infested with Israelites. So sub-Saharan Africa or Africa period is the land of the Israelites. That's where, where the majority of Israelites dwell right now. Yeah, that's deep, brother. You're taking us to school tonight, man. I appreciate you know what you're bringing to the table tonight, man. I know these guys here, they, they're going to they're be upset when they watch this, but you know, they needed to hear what you're talking about. Um, man, we definitely for, 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 for all the people that say, yeah. you know, what are we going to do? You know, how are we going to leave America and go to Africa? Well, when the Chinese, when the East Indian, when the Koreans, when the Yemeni, when the Palestinians, the Lebanese, the Iraqis, the Chaldean, you know, all these people, when they come to the, the, the Irish, the Polish, the Jews, when they come to America, mm-hmm. do you think they come to America and they say, ah, we made it to America, see you later, I'm going to Michigan, I'm going to New York, I'm going to Colorado, I'm going to Miami? No. 
They say, where are you guys staying at? We, we all need to stay together. Okay, let's get a house. They start walking together. Let's get this house right here. They all package the house. <laughs> they go to the house. They they got like one car. They all use one car. You know, they got a couple women in there cooking dinner for the men. When they come home from work, the men got a home cooked meal. And they start stacking their money up. They don't have they don't have much. They just got the clothes in the back and they have the skills of their hands and they and they start to navigate and look and see what, what they can do. Oh, this got this person's hiring. This person's hiring. Do I need to be hired under the table because I'm not a full citizen yet? So they get to, they get hired into it. They, they're making that money under the table as as non-citizens, and then they get their money together. Now they become a citizen. Now they get a business. Now they get a big house. Now they get a couple of trucks, a couple of trailers, a couple of this, a couple of that, a couple of houses, and they got a bank account with a lot of money in it. And now they went from surviving to thriving. Mm -hmm. And this is what the nations are doing in Africa. The Lebanese they leave Lebanon, and and the, they they establish grocery stores and gas stations and and convenience stores dollar stores pizza pizza shack chicken shacks in the inner city in detroit the lebanese so that when you want your groceries you go inside say who owns this the lebanese own this they got fresh produce they got meat they got fish they got all the perishables they got they got the milk they got the butter they got everything they got the juices we like the papaya juices they got, they got everything you know bill payment center got everything they got security and they got black people working some of the registers, but in the mix of the people working the registers, they got the Lebanese people working the registers. And in, in the back where the bosses are at behind the, behind the glass bulletproof door, the, the, they're back there counting the money. They're doing the business. They're looking around, see, making sure everybody's doing things right. And the Lebanese have figured out how to get stuff in and out of America so they can supply their grocery stores in the inner city. And so they say, hmm, we can do that in Africa because Afri people in Africa need food. Everybody needs food. Yes, in Africa, they have the local market. The local market, you don't have to open the door to get to the market. The market is outside. The market can come to your door while you're in the, while you're in, the, in the street at the at the uh, at the stoplight. But yes, even though in Africa you have the market where people show up with their goods, they show up and one guy has a fish a fish stand, tilapia and and, and grouper. The other guy has beef. The other guy has lamb, beef, chicken, goat. The other person has mangoes. The other person has, you know, uh, tomatoes. Everybody's selling something at the local market. But, but the but the thing that the Lebanese people and the other nations figured out is that we like the conveniences of the West, the United Kingdom and America. And they said, we need to provide a grocery store. And the grocery store is going to have everything all nicely packaged with a barcode on it. And, it, and, then, and then if we are smart, then we'll section off half the store to be like a Walmart. So now you got your groceries, groceries on this side of the store. You got every you got your microwaves and you got your you know your, your your coffee makers and your and your and your dishwashers and your and your stoves and your TVs on the other side of the store and, and clothes and everything. They have monopolized what they've what they've been doing and seeing in America. Why? Because when the other nations like the Lebanese and the Koreans, when they see how the Caucasians have mastered business in America, they say, Wow, who owns Walmart? The, the the Walmart family, the Waltons. Wow, who owns Costco's? Who owns Sam's Club? Who owns Kroger's? Who owns Publix and Food Lions? Who owns these malls? How do they do they See, they see that the Caucasians are at the top. They've got all these establishments that they control. Amazon, Twitter, Google, you know, Whole Foods. And they say, well, you know what? Since we can't get to the, to the top because they got these positions, we have been watching how they've been doing things. We have our liquor stores in the inner city. We have our grocery stores. We have our dollar stores. We have our chicken shacks, our pizza sacks. But we can do exactly what they've done with Walmart and Sam's Club and Costco's and Best Buy and ABC Warehouse and all this stuff. And we can do the same thing in Africa because Africa is a virgin continent. All you got to do is see the need, get the building, and start moving product and open the store. Grand opening, come on in. And the African people of Africa, they got money. People are not poor. They, got, they need a cell phone, iPhone, or Android phone. Or you know some kind of gadget, some kind of speaker system, Bluetooth. Guess what? They're gonna go to the store, and if you go in the store, who are you gonna see? The Chinese, the Arabs, the East Indians, the Europeans, and they're they're monopolizing. They, they they're winning. They are winning because they stick together. And in a foreign continent, yes, they might they might survive in the beginning, but then later on, because they work like a team, they thrive. They thrive. Yeah, real dope, brother. So, um, how much time you got? Because I got like I got like really like one, two more questions for you. You got a little time to stay with us for about, about five more minutes. 
yeah, yeah. Because I, I I wanted to ask you, you know, what do we say about you know these camps out here and these uh these other Israelites who who may comments and may say something like, um, I won't feed an African, okay? I won't feed a Gentile. You know, you have Tazaria from ISUPK who said he would not feed an African. Can that truly be said as an Israelite, knowing what you know now by going to Ghana and doing the research that you have done? Would a good conversation between you and Tazaria help him, ISUPK, and their teachings to uh, accept new information and now we can move forward as one because i think that's one of the main problems within the israelite community we have too many ideologies not enough research so we have people who are out here such as yourself doing research doing the groundwork who are actually out here you know on the forefront that can bring back the information that we need so that the teachings can be updated because i mean come on it's been some years now do we need an updating and can igpk benefit from the things that you are, are, have learned yeah we we a lot of the israelites we do need to update like you update your your uh, hp your microsoft office we, we need to update because i've seen some stuff that's still holding on strong in the israelite community you know not to say we need to debate everything but sometimes we can have a a, a discussion uh and have a round table and you have leaders from different organizations sit down and let's let's let's, let's talk about some issues here in israel some issues that that are positive and negative um do, you know let's address the white man is esau doctrine let's let's address you know uh, are all people in africa hamites doctrine let's address is leaving america a flea doctrine is it biblical uh do we need to be preparing for uh the market of beasts and what is the market of beasts and should we become try to become self-sustainable right now whether we're in america and africa and what does that look like and who's going to help organize this because we have massive amounts of congregations and assemblies uh and and places churches that that have a lot of members they have a lot of members they have a lot of reach on social media that means that they can pull in these monies that they have some kind of uh, project where you say we need people to donate 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 so we're gonna we can establish some land here in America, even though even though we own less than one percent of the farmland in America, can we get a piece of the land of America so we can feed ourselves? Because without land in America, we can't feed ourselves. If we don't own any land in America, how are we gonna how, how are we gonna have livestock to graze the land, to eat the land? The chickens can't. The chickens and the goat and the sheep and the and the cows, they can't produce anything for us if they don't have nothing to graze. We don't have no land for them to graze, and so we got the these things we have to start asking. And then one of the things we have to do is. When I see Israelites on the street and they say, um, they might be some black people, they might say, I say, where are you from, brother? They say, I'm from Africa. Are you African? Yes. You're a Hamite. Well, <laughs> well, everybody in Africa is not a Hamite. You know, it could be an Arab guy. He could say, I'm, he said, are you from Africa? Yes. I'm from Asia. Are we going to say he's a Hamite? No. But the, the question is, and I, and I pose this question to, to Garfield and others, I said, what religious book, whether it's the Quran, whether it's the Book of the Dead, the Coffin text, the Pyramid text, the, the Bible, where in the world can somebody find me a text where there was a man that lived named Africa that had children called Africans? Where? Where is it? Where does it exist? You know, we cannot say we are West Africans. I mean, using the term African is just a, a place of residence. You're living on the continent of Africa, just like we're living on our continent of America. They say we're Americans or African Americans. But the term Africa is not a term of your ethnicity and nationality or your birthright. You know, you, your birthright is, does not come from the term Africa, it comes from your ancestral forefather. So, therefore, when we say Africa, we need to be more specific. You need to say, well, okay, well, what country do you come from, brother? And you say, I'm from Nigeria. Okay, are you Nigerian? Okay, but still, that's, that doesn't cut it because in Nigeria, you have the Hausas, you have the Fulani, you have the Igbos, the Rubas, the Ibibios, and they have different DNA types, specifically the, the Hausas and the Fulani. So the Hausas and the Fulani knows that they're not the Igbos, that they're two different people. And the, we know from a lot of studies that the Igbos are the Israelites. So if somebody says, I'm African, you say, okay, what country are you from? Nigeria. You're a Hamite. 
No, ask the brother, what tribe are you from? I'm from the Igbo tribe. Okay, if you do your, if you, if people listen to my studies and research and others, you know, this just this, this Nigerian Igbo book authors and they write about this stuff. This movie called The Jews of the Re Emerging the Jews of Nigeria. You will find out that they are the Israelites. They say that they come from uh, uh, Gad's son, Eri, or sometimes uh, Ephraim. So then, if you see upon the street and they say, I'm an African, don't be, we shouldn't be quick to say, You're a Hamite. We shouldn't be quick to say, Everybody in Africa. Is basically Hamites. They sold us into slavery. Well, if they're Hamites and they sold us into slavery, and their DNA is even B one A. I've had a I had a brother from Nigeria from the Ibibio ethnic tribe in Cross River uh, area uh, in Southeast Nigeria. He did his DNA test. He said he was an Israelite. He followed one of the camps. He said, "Ryan, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. Like you know, I'm wondering." When my DNA comes come back, is it gonna be? Am I gonna be a Hamite? I said, "You think you're Hamite?" He said, "That's my. That's the camp that I that I follow. They teach." And he was he was so nervous, like he like he was having like like his stomach was upset and everything, like you know, like he was just so. And then finally, he got his DNA test results, and he showed it to me. It said like ninety nine point nine percent sub Saharan Bantu African, and the in the top country was Nigeria, and then the the half of group was E M two. E one B one A. Now a lot of us African Americans, we get our DNA test. Was well, African ancestry, or whatever your twins were, me, you know, Jeb match, whatever you want to use, a family tree DNA. We get our DNA tests as African Americans, and our DNA for most of us, the majority of African Americans in America and Caribbean blacks, their DNA is going to be E M two slash E one B one A. So that means that if these people in Africa that supposedly are Hamites. They have the same DNA as us from the father, and then even from the mother. We say, you say, oh, what's your DNA, Mister, uh, Mister, you know, Nigerian guy? He says L two, L three, and you go to the African American guy and say, hey, you did your DNA test? Yeah, what's your what's your maternal DNA say? It said L two, L three. It said E one V one A. It said that my DNA is most uh, uh, close to the people in Nigeria and Benin. So then you guys say, well, if if we're teaching that they're Hamites, then we're Hamites. Because if you look at the science. People might say, oh, well, DNA is a white man's science. We can't use that. But then you say, well, well, you know, brother, I said, I heard you, you know, you were fighting your, your baby mama and child support and you don't believe it's her, you don't believe you're the father and child. What, how did you determine, how did you beat that? Oh, I use DNA. You know, people are getting off from, from life synthesis by using DNA, black people. So DNA is convenient for us when we want to prove that we're not the father, like, like Maury Popovich. You're not the father. And the guy starts dancing, he starts going crazy, you know, or you say, well, you know, did you test the blood analysis on the shirt? You know, you may say that I, this guy may say that I fit the, the description of the guy that left the scene of the crime, but check the check the blood on the guy's shirt. You know, does it match my blood? No, it does not. Okay, you can leave. Sorry for keeping you in prison for twenty years, sir. But now we have DNA research, and we got you got we got you free. There's people I, I know somebody personally in my in my family that spent twenty five years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, only to be. Uh, exonerated because of DNA research, and and of course there's a lawsuit coming after that. There's a lawsuit coming and money being owed from imprisoning somebody, the wrong the wrong person, and DNA and other things can 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 improve your innocence. So we always like to say, you know, you, you know, they're Hamites, but then when you look at the science and DNA and the people with African Afri African ancestry DNA, this guy is a black geneticist. It means that he went to school. He went to school. And he knows how to test DNA, just like anybody in the world can test DNA. So you can't tell him that if he has these materials to test the DNA, he can run it in his lab that's controlled by black people. He doesn't have to send it out nowhere. He, if he runs it in his lab and, the, and he types the DNA sequence and it comes out even with one that he's wrong because he's using, he's using the white man's science. The white man did not create everything. We give the, we give the European man too much credit. Like he did, it, he did everything. He created math, science, mathematics, DNA. You know, astrology, like he's done everything. Everything that we use in terms of science is a, is a creation of the white man. So medicine, medicine falls into the into the aspect of science. So everything medical, every, all types of medical research was 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 invented and created by the white man. Therefore, if we can't use DNA, we can't use modern medicine because it's made by the white man. Don't trust the white man. Don't trust the DNA. Don't trust science. So there's a lot of stuff that we got we got we got to stop. We gotta stop doing them because at the end of the day, facts are facts. 
and we cannot be ignorant and ignore, ignore certain things. It, it, we got to call it call it for what it is. Yeah, because I, I used to be on the fence. I used to be on the fence about DNA. I used to think DNA didn't really matter, you know, until, you know, recently, you know, a couple of years ago, I got a chance to actually see, you know, the uh, the company uh, do their thing. Uh, what is it? The African Ancestry um, Company, right? And so uh, they came back with a different test. Some people was Yoruba, some people was from, um, they were Falasha and some other different, you know, tribes throughout Africa, whatnot. Uh, one girl, she her thing came back and said she was a part of uh, what is the Big Tooth Tribe or, or the Gap Tooth Tribe. Like it's a real tribe called the Gap Tooth Tribe. So you see people with gaps, <laughs> yeah, they from the Gap Tooth Tribe. But but real spill though, you know what I mean? Like I was on the fence, man, for a long time about DNA. Period. You know what do you what do you say to those people that are on the fence? I hear what you're saying, but you know from my perspective, I was like, okay, they only using DNA across the people that are alive today. Like they can't really go across you know the entire you know a population of people who have been dead it's only about the people who are alive today you know that's the side that I, I was sitting on for a very long time what do you say to that mike mikael shall i say well when you look at like i had a brother that um he's from jamaica and he, he knew about the connection of jamaica uh to the gold cults uh the shanties the fanties um, a lot of Jamaicans uh, or Ghanaians that go to Jamaica, they can attest that uh, people in Jamaica are speaking their dialect and doing their traditions and customs, eating the same food. And so the Jamaica brother did his DNA test. And when he got his DNA test back, uh, it said Ghana. It said Ghana. And it said, you know, Fati Ashanti tribe. And it coincides with the history. It coincides with the history. Even the Haitians would get the DNA test, and the Haitians may it may show the Congo, it may show uh, Yoruba, Evo, or it may show the Gold Coast, uh, or just Ghana period because or Ghana Togo because you look at a lot of the people in Haiti, the Haitian Creole is a mixture of the Eve language. Uh, the Eve language is seen uh, vastly throughout uh, Yoruba land, uh, Benin, uh, Togo, Ghana, and some people may say even farther than that. Uh, amongst other languages, such as the Taino language and Portuguese and French. So when you look at DNA, DNA tells, tells a true story of, uh, of how we got to the Americas or the Caribbean. A lot of people that, uh, that, that are Gola Giche from South Carolina, Charleston, uh, they'll do their DNA test and the DNA test comes back Sierra Leone. And, and a lot of people from Sierra Leone uh, they have a connection and a history of being of being taken to the Americas in that same area, including Cuba as well. So, in the dialect is this, dialect is similar, and the traditions and customs are similar. You see the same dancing is similar to certain regions of Africa where they were taking the slaves. Um, when we test DNA from people that are dead, like like skeletons, you know they're they're testing it the best way they can using the STR S and P uh, uh, markers. To come to a, a, a closest assumption or uh, a determination of this person's this person's genetic makeup was most likely falls in the line of say like E1B1A or R1A R1B A uh, B uh, C, and this is how they can determine um, which haplogroups are connected to certain people. Like the pygmies are um, are B or B2B. And you see that the the the, the Kushites with the South Sudanese, their Y DNA A. Uh, so you're not gonna see A throughout the whole world. You're gonna see A specifically in the region of ancient Sudan or ancient Nubia or ancient Kush, because they are the Kushites. They are the Nilots in in the Bantu people in Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania. They know who the Nubians are. They know that Idi Amin was a Nubian Kushite. They know that he was not a Bantu. Uh, or an Israelite. So they know these things. And so it's no surprise when you do the DNA test uh, of ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Nubia, you will see the same DNA that corresponds to the descendants of the ancient Nubians and the ancient Egyptians in certain certain tribes that you see today in North East Africa and East Africa and Central Africa. And you can also tell us what autosomal uh, DNA tests as well to prove in Africa, who are the truest, closest descendants of the ancient Puttites, the ancient Canaanites, the ancient Egyptians, 
uh, in the ancient Kushites. And so I know it's a lot of stuff and people have a lot of doubts on DNA, but uh, uh, I can I can kind of prove it and, and rest all those feet, rest, arrest all those fears and doubts of people. Have, but people have to be willing to listen, willing to hear what I have to say and not just be autom automatic. No, nah, I don't believe anything you say. You don't know anything. You're a fraud. You're a fake. You're a phony. All you care about is your books. All you care about is your movies. All you care about is, is, is going to Ghana, all this stuff. We have to we have to have an open mind to have a discussion and just and just listen, listen, and then and then you know we we can't update our teachings. There's nothing wrong with updating our teachings because I think it's a lot of teachings, a lot of Israelites agree. We need to update. We need to update some things. Yeah. A lot of people in Africa, you can't go to Africa and stand on the street corner with the twelve tribes chart, and the twelve tribes chart don't show no, no African countries. So how can you be in, in Gambia, and Senegal, and Sierra Leone, and Nigeria, and Ghana, and Togo? We have the 12 tribes chart, and we see the 12 tribes in different countries, and they're like, Well, where are we at? Are we Israelites? Because right now I look at the 12 tribes chart, I don't see my country on here anywhere. So that's a problem. So maybe we need to update some things, including the 12 tribes chart. Maybe we need to have an African 12 tribes chart. If, if we don't want to get rid of the, the initial 12 tribes chart that's, that's that's out right now, maybe we need to add the African 12 tribes chart. Maybe we need to add the Pacific Islanders or the Oceana 12 tribes chart. So, you know, yeah, but yeah, who knows if this is ever going to happen? Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. I mean, you know, that 12 tribes <laughs> chart look real awesome coming into the belief or a person who's really trying to seek knowledge and you come across the 12 tribes chart. It's like, man, these whoever designed it, you know, it looks like they did some extensive research. You know what I mean? But then when you realize like where it comes from and, you know, and then you do the research and do these studies for yourself now, it's like, no, that is not it. And I, and I, you know, and I hear what a lot of, you know, Israelites, I hear what their arguments are. You know what I mean? I also hear they say the same argument with, you know, King James being black. You know what I mean? Like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> we got to talk well, about every, that. Every, 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 a lot of, in the Israelite community, oftentimes everybody's black. I mean, you yeah, know, all, black. <laughs> all the kings of England are black. All the kings of Scotland are black. All the kings of Ireland are black. All yeah. the, the, the Frankish kingdom was black. You know, the Eastern Roman Empire, the, whole, the, the Western Roman Empire, they're all black. They're all black. <laughs> You know, but what do you say about, you know, and, and I'm going to let you go, man. You know what I mean? Because we, we've been holding it down, but I see a couple people online, man. But, you know, are, are you one of the Israelites that says that all black people are Israelites? Are you that guy that says that? Or do you just know that, you know, based off of, uh, just, just break that down for me. Go ahead with that one. I ain't going to go too far with it. Go yeah, ahead. Anybody, go ahead. Should know, anybody should know that all black people are not the Israelites because we, we know that. The, Som the Somalians, the Tuaregs, the Fulani, the Hausa, the African Pygmies, uh, they're black, uh, uh, but they're, they don't ascribe to, to being Israelites. A lot of them don't even do Hebrew traditions and customs. Uh, we look at people in, um, say like the Andaman Islanders, people might say, well, they're black too. They're, they're very black. Uh, are they the Israelites? Has anybody done any research on this? You might go to you might and you might say, well, what, what when we say black? What do we mean by black? Because there's people in India that have dark skin tones that will be considered, I guess, black. But are they the Israelites too? You know, so we have to understand in the continent of, of Africa, in the land of Ham, that we know that the ancient Egyptians are black. We know that the ancient Kushite Nubians are black. We can see this on the walls, the walls of Egypt. So already we already know that. We see in Nubia, Kush, in Egypt that two of the sons of Ham were black. So that must mean that they put in Canaan had to also be black. So then saying that all the Israelites are black or all black people are the Israelites is like saying that everybody in Africa are the Israelites when we know that, that the children of Ham are still in Africa. Uh, they didn't just disappear. They didn't all die off. So they're still in Africa. People just need to know where they're at because then we can start to understand the term Africa and who are the Israelites in Africa, who are the Hamitic Hem people in Africa, who are the descendants of the Black Arabs in Africa, who are the descendants of the, of the Moors in Africa, and then I can give a better understanding. Yeah. So where can people find you and and um, you know so come and support your channel? You know what I mean. I'm gonna put your channel link in the chat. But where can people find you and tell the people what you got going on? Uh, they can find me. Um, on YouTube, um, 
Hebrews to Negroes TV, aka Moses Levi, is the name. Uh, they can find me on Instagram uh, at uh, Hebrews with a S underscore T O underscore Negroes N E G R O E S. Uh, they can also find me on www dot the Negro Network dot com N E G R O N E T W O R K dot com and they can find me now on the platform h 2 ntvcom www.h2ntv.com. Uh, that is the URL for the platform, the streaming platform we just launched for the Israelites to, to be able to post their uh, content, music. We got different categories. You can go in there and look for yourself. All right, one more time. Tell me, tell me the link again. www.h2ntv.com. Uh, and tv.com so h2n tv.com uh the apps are on roku and amazon fire stick so if you have amazon fire stick and, and roku you can just type in the search for the channel h2n space tv and you can you can download the app and you can start streaming uh we're adding content there uh often all the footage that we took for the 25 days in ghana uh, and other teachings I'll be doing on um, Canaanites, the, the the Kushites, the Egyptians, the Putites, and other other uh, nations. I'm be putting those videos on uh, the the platform H2 and TV. I'm not giving YouTube any more free stuff. YouTube makes a lot of money off of, off of, off of us, off of Black people and the Israelites by running ads and doing all types of things. They don't market and advertise anything for us. They don't bring us together. They don't they don't you know some people monetize, but I don't monetize because they they always stop me from monetizing. Uh, and you know, they probably don't want my channel to exist anyway, but so we gotta have a backup platform, um, for our content, content that's, that's designed to edify, educate and empower our people. So we gotta start, we gotta stop banging on Esau, stop banging on Jacob and start looking forward to, uh, goals and, and, and completing projects and, and looking towards the future and really taking care of us, uh, in, 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 in terms of moving forward and stop always looking at the present and the past it's good to understand our history and what's going on now talk about these things and complain and complain and complain and complain but at some point we have to stop doing all the talking and uh and start getting things done let's, let's start putting uh uh uh, uh wh wheels to the ground let's put that footwork in like michael israel says and we start getting some stuff done and, and that's what that, that's what people are looking at right now they're looking at israelites that are, are not about just talking uh doing a lot of talking nothing nothing's really being said they're looking at Israelites that are doing a lot of talking, but they're actually producing. They're producing fruit. Uh, the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit and that faith without works is dead. We can have all the faith in the world, but if we sit back and say, oh, the Bible says the Most High is going to do this. The Bible says the Most High is going to do this. Well, you can sit back all day long and kick, kick your hand back and say, Most High, say he's going to he's gonna get me a, get me some, new, some money. He's going to remove me out of America. I want to leave America, but the Most High said he's going to take care of it. So I'm just gonna kick back and just wait for a sign. I'm gonna wait for the chariots. I'm gonna wait for a rapture event. I'm gonna wait for a teleportation uh, event to happen. But sometimes, you know, there's things that we have to also do. We have to show God that that we have faith in Him and we're trying hard to do the best we can uh, to 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 do what it is that we are being led to do. Um, and and unfortunately, at this time and age, there's a lot of uh, teachers that are teaching false doctrines. A lot of false prophets, and they're swaying public opinion in the Israelite community all over the place. You know, so that people are saying that you know we're we're indigenous uh, to this land. This is the land of Israel. We were never taken as slaves from West Africa. We've always been here, so there's no need for us to go to Africa. If anything, we need to be going to Israel. But wait a minute, the new the, our our our, t our leadership just said that Israel is in Peru now. So we really don't need to go to Israel or Africa. We just need to go to Jerusalem, which is in Peru. So a lot of kind of crazy doctrines is going on, and we just need to we need to we need to figure out uh, what's the best uh, move for us as a people, uh, for your family, your friends, your loved ones, and you need to start. You need to ask questions, ask your leader questions, fact check your leaders. If something doesn't doesn't make sense, you know, ask them. You know, ask them questions, ask them hard questions, and if they can't answer the question, they tell you, you know, that's not important. You know, you're 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 disturbing leadership. You're disturbing the lesson. 
you know, if you don't like it, you can just leave. Then that's your answer right there. Because no, no question, no question is a dumb question. You know, that's that's how I learn a lot uh, from asking questions. I'm always in Sunday school raising my hand. I'm always in, in college raising my hand. The teacher might get tired of me up, raise my hand, like, Ron, what, what is it now? What is it now? What is it now? What is it now? But you ask a lot of questions from people you meet. Uh, you kind of not necessarily interrogate them, but you interview them and you soak in all the knowledge that they give you. Because a lot of people in Africa, they, they, they speak in proverbs and parables. They give you a lot of wisdom, but you're going to have to understand their proverbs and parables that they speak in. Uh, and and then and then if you know how to how to get get it out of them because you say wait a minute I'm American I don't I don't get your your proverb and your parable so can you explain this to me and then they'll break it down for you and they say ah okay now I understand yeah so that's that's what people should do oh yeah most definitely I totally agree you know we got a lot of questions in the chats and I see y'all chat I see I see the questions and things going on in there man shout outs to everybody in the chat I appreciate y'all coming in and making the room so so nice and and, and conversationable uh what I see one guy here you know he got a lot of good questions in here and I'm gonna address one of them which is uh what he said he said so are you saying this is elevation Allah let me let me add elevation a lot up here real quick because elevation says so are you saying esau and jacob are different you know I, i'm not going to answer that because we already discussed that so what you could do is my brother is go back to the beginning of the video It's very you know close probably within the 10 minute mark where uh the brother he went over that we talked about that already all right maybe around the 15 minute mark but go back and check that and we in there all right. When did Israel exist before 1948? Oh, see, he's trying to be a, a smart guy. You know, come on, people, man. We're trying to build here, man. Come on now. You, you we, We're having a very intellectual conversation, not trying to argue with anybody. But we all know what happened before 1948, 47 and, you know, moving forward. You know, we, we, we come on. You know, we're trying to build here and make things a better place for everybody, not just Israelites, because we all in this thing together. You know what I mean? And shout outs to, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know, tomorrow, you know, just a lot really going on. And we're just trying to build, man, and have, you know, positive, you know, vibes with all of you. OK, but I appreciate what you're saying and what you're asking. And um, and, and, and Ron, I appreciate you pulling up, you know, having a, you know, a few moments, man. We've been on here almost two hours, man. Don't even mm -hmm. seem like it. Don't even mm -hmm. seem like it, but um, but yeah, let's 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 catch up, you know, and 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 revisit this because I'm sure you're gonna have some more some more things going on. I'm pretty sure you probably write another book right now, you know, and and I'm sure you got a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, I definitely want to have you back, man. I appreciate your time, man. All right, no problem. <laughs> All right, bet bet. All right, everybody, y'all go and and follow Ron Dalton everywhere he. <laughs> Hebrews to Negroes, go check his book out, go watch his DVD. You know, he dropped a lot of knowledge, man. I mean, the book is really cool. I like the book. Um, I'm, I started reading it, you know, uh, earlier today. I didn't get a chance to read it, you know, but I'm really liking what you put in here. And just to, you know, to see what you were saying about the Ashkenazi Jews, the information I'm already seeing, you're already answering questions that I was looking for already. So I appreciate that. You know, I can't say that for a lot of other books. You know, I would. It's holding up the table right now. It's holding my table up. But I had another book down here, you know, but I'm not going to bring it up and show y'all because I ain't trying to promote anything that's pseudo. We're going to promote that real. But uh, yeah. if you have not liked the video, please like the video. Show some love, man. We, this is how we we get out here, try to get the message out here and try to make things work. Please share the video. Thumbs up. Give it a like. And uh, I got the cash app link in there. Y'all want to send us some love, man, so we can keep this thing here going. All right, we're going to keep this thing rolling. I appreciate y'all, and we're going to see y'all next time. Out of here.